Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Neurodivergent. I'll give you a moment to process my pink hair because I know how much you all love sudden change. If you're new here, hi. On this channel, I mainly talk about autism and ADHD. So if that interests you, I hope you'll consider hitting that like and subscribe button because word on the street is that neither one of these actions will take up any space in your hard drive. But if you choose not to, that's okay too. Watching my videos is good enough as well. Today, we're going to talk about how people with autism sometimes get called narcissistic, even though these two things are very different. So stay tuned to find out why that confusion exists. Thanks for sticking around. As with many things pertaining to autism, I'm not the first person to touch on this subject because it really is a pretty big misconception. However, I don't shy away from doing topics that others have already put videos out on for a few reasons. First is because I might have a nuanced take based on my own personal experiences or have a unique way in how I put information together that will speak to some people differently than others can. And there are videos out there by other creators that might speak to you in a way that I can't. The second is because there may be some viewers out there who are hearing this from me for the first time who haven't been introduced to the topic otherwise. So I'm going to put links to a bunch of articles and videos to other creators who have already covered this topic so you can get your information from a variety of resources. But I want to acknowledge Dr. Romani specifically who did one of the best videos on this subject that I've seen. I highly recommend you look it up and give it a watch if you haven't already done so. Now, Keep in mind, I am not a professional researcher who claims to have firsthand knowledge on any of this. I pull my information from a variety of sources and include my own views and experiences. None of this research is my own, and any views or information expressed in this video should not be misattributed to the views or research of others. Before we get into it, I must do the obligatory acknowledgement that I'm neither a medical or mental health professional. I'm just some girl on YouTube, and the contents of this video aren't meant to constitute medical advice or diagnose you with anything. We should have all our bases covered. Unless you're one of my subscribers, in which case I am qualified to diagnose you with a severe case of awesome. Look, this is my certification right here. Now let's get started. As most of you know, autism can come with and without intellectual disability, but we'll mainly be discussing autism without intellectual disability in this video. Let's start off by having a look at why people confuse autistic traits with narcissism in the first place. We can appear self-absorbed and egocentric because we're oftentimes stuck in our own little world, and it seems like we talk about ourselves all the time. We may forget to show a lot of interest in the life of others, making it seem like we don't care about anyone else. We might come off as selfish because it can be difficult to get us to talk about things that we aren't interested in. And we always seem to bring the conversation back to the things we do care about. We might appear to be aloof to the feelings of others. We can seem controlling due to our inflexibility and extreme need for order. We can be so meticulous about schedules and routines or the order in which things are done that we tend to get angry or upset when those things get disrupted or weren't executed exactly as we expected, which makes it seem like we're throwing a temper tantrum because things didn't go our way. Now, the place I personally hear autistic traits being conflated with narcissism the most is in mixed neurotype relationship groups, and I can have a lot of understanding as to why that is. There are many deeply hurt people out there who have been negatively impacted by mixed neurotype issues, and I was no exception to this. Before my diagnosis, my husband and I talked about how I seemed narcissistic because I often talked about what was going on in my own little world. I would sometimes forget to ask other people about themselves and about the things going on in their lives. But we both knew I couldn't be narcissistic because not only was I oftentimes self-depreciating, I often struggled to tell people no and cared about others to my own detriment. Luckily, this never really caused any big fights for us, but it was a confusing paradox for us at the time. Another personal observation I've made, however, is that this confusion does seem to be more prevalent in mixed neurotype relationships where the male is autistic and the female is the neurotypical. Because 
just like with autism, how the traits of NPD present can differ between men and women, and men are recognized for diagnoses at higher rates than women. And since the externally observable traits of autism are oftentimes more recognized in males as well, I personally see the confusion existing the most within this specific relationship dynamic, but that doesn't mean it's the only place this confusion exists. But in order to understand why these traits of autism are not traits of narcissism, we must first understand what the traits of narcissism actually are. Dr. Romani lists off several traits typical to narcissism personality disorder that are as follows. Lack of empathy, entitlement, grandiosity, envy, validation seeking, superficiality, egocentricity, shame, feelings of inadequacy, overblown sense of self-esteem, impulsivity, manipulation, arrogance, sensitivity to rejection, dysregulated rage, and a sense of victimhood. Narcissism is a personality disorder. It often begins in the early teens or adulthood, and it is not usually diagnosed before the age of 18, although it should be noted that earlier signs of NPD could exist in younger children but may not be differentiated from self-centered behavior normal in adolescents. Whereas Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder which impacts communication and social interactions and can manifest in the following ways. Difficulty in initiating and maintaining conversations. Difficulty in social behaviors. Trouble with understanding social cues. Lack of interest in relationships. Abnormality in eye contact. Restricted and repetitive behaviors. Inflexibility to routines. Need for sameness. Fixated interests. And sensitivities to sensory inputs. Since autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder, it is present at birth and can be detected as early as 18 months old. By age 2, a diagnosis by an experienced professional can be considered reliable. When we think of NPD, we oftentimes think of the more well-known classic form of grandiose narcissism. There are about eight different types of narcissism total, but they all have similar characteristics of lack of empathy and self-centeredness. So first let's look at some of the key differences between ASD and NPD. Then we'll look at some of the areas of overlap. Narcissists can and do recognize the feelings of others, but they just don't care about them. Whereas autistics do care about the feelings of others, but may not recognize them due to missed social cues or other social deficits. Narcissists are oftentimes very extroverted and outgoing and have superficially charming and charismatic personalities. This is because they literally need to attract people to supply their demand for social status and constant excessive admiration. Thus, relationships are transactional in nature for them. Whereas autistic people tend to be more introverted and prefer isolated activities. An article in the NIH describes ASD as an extreme case of diminished social motivation. Juxtaposed to being perceived as having a charming and charismatic personality by others, those with ASD are more likely to be perceived as socially awkward and have difficulty in engaging in reciprocal conversations. So whereas in narcissism they need a supply of people, those with autism are more socially avoidant. To be clear, they're not people phobic. They can and do form meaningful relationships. They're just not as motivated to seek them out and might have difficulty in maintaining those social interactions. Narcissists are oftentimes preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. And they are oftentimes envious of others and believe others should envy them. While those with autism, as we just discussed, are less socially motivated. So as you can imagine, status seeking would be a close cousin to this. And while little research exists on autistic attitudes towards social hierarchies, a large review of verbal and written communication from autistics show that those with autism find status seeking illogical and prefer egalitarian relationships instead. Narcissists often behave arrogantly 
brag a lot, come across as conceited, and seem to have an unreasonably high sense of self-importance and grandiosity, whereas social stigmas and autism interfere with the development of positive social identity, and thus, those with autism have lower levels of self-esteem and higher levels of depression and anxiety. So, like the opposite. Of all of that. It should be noted that those with NPD do not actually have a secure sense of high self-esteem, but instead have a fragile high sense of self-esteem that is dependent on external validation. Narcissists take advantage of others to get what they want, whereas people on the spectrum are more likely to be taken advantage of. Of. They're vulnerable to exploitation and abuse because they may have difficulty understanding social cues and communication, including difficulty recognizing when the behavior of others is concerning or inappropriate. Narcissists use manipulation and deceitfulness to get what they want, whereas while people on the spectrum can and do engage in deception, they are shown to do so less frequently and are less adept at it than neurotypicals. Narcissists may exhibit bit overconfidence, impulsivity, and a willingness to ignore expert advice and place a higher regard on their own opinion or advice, which results in a higher likelihood of making bad decisions. Their actions are often said and done with little regard to consequence. Whereas people with autism are less likely to be impulsive, are more risk avoidant and rule following, and tend to sample more information prior to decision making. <sighs> decision making and autism. There's another video I need to get to. Now, as with everything, there are exceptions to many of the things I have said here. It is near impossible to be entirely accurate and all encompassing of every scenario and exception in a 20 minute YouTube video. But there is such a thing as an extroverted autistic. In the past, I've described them kind of like a bull in a china closet because they want all the socials, but due to their social deficits, it's like they barge in, run around the shop, and break all the fine china. In other words, they excitedly jump into a room full of people and eagerly try to interact, but haven't quite mastered all the social graces and people might be put off by them. And there is such a thing as vulnerable narcissism, where they have all the same traits of NPD, but tend to be more introverted and have more of a withdrawn form of self-centeredness. As I mentioned earlier, there are about eight different types of narcissism and the vulnerable type specifically can really muddy the waters between ASD and NPD. So if you're steadfast enough to stick around until the end of this video, I'll address that in more detail there, but I need to get through the differences and overlap between the more typical presentations of both conditions before I throw my waders on and jump into the mud with y'all. And last but not least, as far as social motivations go, while those with ASD are less socially motivated, it should be noted that girls with ASD are typically more socially motivated than guys, even in ASD. And if you have the comorbidity of ADHD like me, you may not relate to a lot of this stuff on social deficits. We're only talking about autism alone here in this video. I swear, I need a damn flowchart to explain all of this stuff. Anyway, now let's look at some of the crossover and why people confuse their spectrumy loved ones as narcissistic. Most would say the biggest confusion comes from the concept of lack of empathy. Now, as most of you know by now, the myth of autistics lacking empathy has been disproven over and over again. Matter of fact, some people on the spectrum have hyper empathy. My son often examines my face and is overly concerned and inquisitive about my emotions. And just the other day, he cried before going to school because one of our backyard chickens jumped on the back of another one of our backyard chickens and picked its head. Like legit crocodile tears. He cannot stand to see any people or animals in pain. And I myself often pick up the emotions of others around me, like a little osmosis-driven membrane. But the appearance of lack of empathy and autism still exists for reasons that fall either into the double empathy problem or the social deficits category. Deficits in understanding facial expressions, body language, and nonverbal cues alone may cause a person with autism to not recognize the emotions of someone else in the first place. But when they do recognize them, 
they care. Autistics sometimes need direct communications of another's emotions or feelings and are more likely to miss subtle hints or cues, but once they recognize the feelings of others, they exhibit empathy. But if they miss these social cues and no one is presenting them with a giant neon lit up sign that states, I'm sad, it seems like they don't give a crap about your feelings. Another issue is that those with flat affect or lack of facial expressions may not show emotions, including empathy, in ways that neurotypicals recognize. And not to get too much off topic, but on the subject of lack of facial expressions, my husband and I just started watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and yes, I know, we're like 10 years late, sue me, I don't get to watch a whole lot of TV, but it reminds me of when everyone is trying to figure out the emotions of Captain Holt, because when whether he's elated or extremely angry, his face always looks the same. Tough weekend? I've never been happier. Knock it off, ADHD. You're getting us distracted. In addition to this, the mismatch of communication styles between neurodiverse and neurotypical individuals might cause people to misinterpret behaviors or interactions as cold or harsh. In example, in response to sharing a problem, logic-driven autistics may rattle off a bunch of solutions-oriented approaches or point out obvious facts about the situation, which makes them seem oblivious or dismissive of your emotions. And their aversion to touch might make them less likely to reach out and give you a comforting hug or pat on the back. And although they might be more than happy to help out, they may not offer to do so without being prompted. So a person with autism might seem like they lack empathy, but only because they miss social cues or their response was misunderstood. Whereas a narcissist can be an expert in communication skills and will use language to manipulate or control others. And they can actually be very attuned to a person's needs, but not because they care about them, but to use them like a tool in order to exploit them. Here are a few other areas of crossover that boil down to misunderstanding autistic traits. Their inflexibility, rigidity, and attention to detail can make them seem controlling. Things have to be just right, and they might have a meltdown if things don't go a certain way. However, this is a need to control their environment and not to control another person. They can seem manipulative or like they're intentionally gaslighting you because of communication style misunderstandings, but the reality often is that the receiver misunderstood the intended message from the autistic. And while this is a video about autism and narcissism, I just want to throw a quick note in here that this appearance of gaslighting can be strong for individuals with ADHD too who might forget or misremember certain details of conversations. An autistic's fixations and narrow interests might make it seem like they only care about themselves. And on a personal level, I think the intensity of special interest can be a pretty big contributor to this overlying misconception. A person with ASD will not only talk about their special interests all the time, they will somehow even manage to bring all conversations you're having with them back to their special interests. They might dedicate a lot of their time to them and will get very irritated if they get interrupted during a preferred activity. All of this makes them seem self-absorbed, but we have an opportunity to use discernment here as their special interest will relate to a certain subject, sometimes referred to as monotropism, and is not a special interest in themselves. It might seem like they hijack conversations whenever you attempt to share something about yourself, which has the appearance of them trying to one-up you or steal the show, but in reality, this is likely their attempt to relate in the only way they know how, which is to share a similar story. This expression of empathy might differ from how a neurotypical person shows empathy, and I'll give you an example of this. Let's say you were telling an autistic person that you recently lost a loved one. They might respond by telling you about a time they also lost a loved one, and in this case, it's easy to see how one might think the ASD person is trying to make it about themselves and not allow you to share your grief. In contrast, a neurotypical person might show more awareness specific to your situation by asking follow-up questions about your loved ones, the circumstances, next steps, etc. When a narcissist does this, it's because they truly do have a need to bring the attention back to them or one-up you. So they might say something like, oh, well, you losing your uncle wasn't as bad as when I lost my uncle because me and my uncle were a lot closer than you and your uncle were. You see the difference there? 
The narcissist is trying to be superior and has an unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of someone else, while the ASD person is most likely making a desperate attempt to show they can relate to the feelings of others. The difference is contempt. How people with autism act during arguments or difficult conversations can be another confusing area of crossover. They might shut down, which makes them seem like they're stonewalling you, disregarding your feelings, or being passive aggressive. However, the cause of this is multifactorial and includes things like processing delays, emotional or sensory overload, stress, or difficulty making decisions. Or they might seem overly defensive and rigid about their position because they don't feel understood. A person with NPD may also shut down, but it's because they don't care about your emotions. They can also seem overly defensive or they can escalate an argument by belittling your feelings, projecting, shifting blame, or being antagonistic. Now, the lines can be really blurry with this one because an ASD person having a single focused lens, inflexibility, and constantly battling the double empathy problem can lead them to seem overly explanatory of their position and dismissive of yours. However, it may not be the rigidity of their position being the correct one, but rather having their position understood. A few possible distinctions to take into consideration between ASD and NPD argumentation styles are as follows. A person with ASD can apologize or take responsibility. It might take them some time due to processing issues and it won't happen 100% of the time, but they can do it. Whereas a person with narcissism will almost never offer a genuine apology or admit wrongdoing unless inauthentically to shut you up or to play the victim or to be manipulative. A person with ASD can state an understanding of your position even if they don't agree with it. They have the ability to understand where you're coming from and sometimes to agree to disagree. Whereas it is very difficult for a person with narcissism to ever concede defeat or admit that another person is correct. With ASD, there should have been arguments where you're able to reach some kind of resolution and mutual understanding. Whereas with NPD, the conversations are almost always circular in nature and rarely ever reach mutual understanding or resolution. Now, you're not going to get apologies or reach resolutions with a, an autistic person 100% of the time, like I said, but even if it's 50% of the time, the point is it can and does happen. Whereas the batting average is closer to zero for a full-blown narcissist. Dysregulated rage is another manifestation of both NPD and ASD, but in narcissism, it's usually caused by perceived threats to their self-image, whereas in autism, it may come from sensory overwhelm or communication challenges. And finally, if a person with autism says hurtful words to you, it may be due to their social deficits and not because they intended to cause harm. Whereas with a narcissist, they know it will hurt you, they don't care, and it's calculated. Like, if you asked your loved one with ASD if they liked your new outfit, they might say no, but not because they have a desire to hurt you, but because they can be truthfully blunt in a manner that most would consider rude. Matter of fact, they might perceive their actions as helpful because, hey, maybe you should change your outfit before you go out. But the motivations in a person with NPD might be to intentionally belittle you because they often tend to look down on others and feel like others are not as important as them. In some cases, it might even stem from unrealistic expectations of perfection in their mate because their partners are viewed as accessories that reflect on their image. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, there are actually a few different types of narcissism, and one of those is called a covert or vulnerable narcissist. And the difficulty of deciphering between this type of narcissism and ASD is a real task. The covert narcissist still has a lack of empathy, entitlement, and pervasive contempt but possesses more ASD-seeming traits like being more introverted and less charismatic, having lower levels of self-esteem, and having higher levels of depression. They frequently engage in projection, i.e. if they're being antagonistic, they'll tell you you're the one being antagonistic, which isn't really a 
common behavior in autism. They have hypersensitivity in criticism and perceived hostility. However, they still hold grandiose beliefs about themselves and feel they are not being recognized or that their special abilities are being misunderstood. This can mimic an autistic's hypersensitivity to criticism, but is more likely to be caused by rejection sensitivity or constantly feeling misunderstood. The covert narcissist can experience feelings of injustice because they feel as though the world owes them and they can often be described as brooding and might even feel others deserve retribution, whereas an autistic sense of injustice is oftentimes centered upon wrongdoing in the world and to others. A covert narcissist wants others to fail and often plays the victim. A person with ASD might be perceived as playing the victim if they're trying to explain how outcomes are affected by some of the challenges they face with autism. But they should not be using this to excuse bad behavior and you should be able to see them doing their best where they can. In other words, they can take accountability and leverage their strengths while reasonably recognizing their weaknesses. Now, is it possible for someone to have co-occurring autism and narcissism? I personally feel that the two are not likely to coexist because I don't see how the core factors that make up both conditions could exist simultaneously. However, a review of studies from 2021 noted that only 0% to 6.4% of people with ASD also had or fit the criteria for NPD. So technically, yes. Despite my feelings on the issue, the experts say the two can co-occur, it's just not common. One final thing to note is that while I couldn't find any studies on this, many people on the spectrum report attracting narcissistic personalities to them. So while I don't have the data to show elevated instances of this, what I can say is that when these two match up, it can be a situation ripe for abuse. Research from a 2015 study notes that children with with high levels of autistic traits are more likely to be targeted for sexual, emotional, and physical abuse. So if we were to take this long old rambly video and boil down the differences, I think we could do that in just one word, and that word is contempt. We can all use discernment to the best of our ability to see when things are gaslighting and manipulation and when things are communication differences or when behaviors are inflexible due to autism or due to self-centeredness and grandiosity or when empathy exists but may be expressed differently than neurotypical behavior or when there's little to no empathy at all. But none of us are experts, least of all, me. As I said earlier, I am not a doctor. I'm a Googler. I had 29 open tabs at the time I was researching all of this, and yes, I researched for an entire week to put this video together, but that still doesn't mean you can now shove this video in someone's face to accuse them of being a narcissist. You can think of this video like a conglomerate of publicly available resources that I cultivated for you and sprinkled with my own lived experience with ASD that can be used as a starting point for discussion. There are people out there who have years of actual experience in behavioral health and psychology. So if you're trying to better understand if someone in your life is autistic or narcissistic, then you should be talking about all of this with a professional. So I'll end it there. Finally. I hope I have earned a subscribe or a like from you, but no pressure as I appreciate you just sticking around until the end of this video. Other than that, hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Mwah. Awesome person detector. Yeah.